Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. So welcome to a brand new day. Um, I've got up this morning, I'm having my puka tea, which is my um, chamomile, rose and lavender. I love the packaging too. <laughs> <laughs> Puka make really good teas and uh, this is a, one of my favorites so hope you got a cup of tea or coffee and um, and just having a nice morning getting into the day slowly relaxing and maybe you've got some fun things uh, planned for the day but um, I just you know wanted to remind you of something today that uh, I was reading a book the other day about this and, and I just wanted to share it with you um, that you know you are remarkable you're amazing Women over 60 have been through so much. We have had a really incredible journey. I mean, sometimes I don't think we stop and think about it, you know, how kind of what our background has been, the things that we've been through, and even to go back further than that, you know, sort of what we, where we came from. I think this is a really valuable um, exercise. Um, uh, it was a life, I was reading about life reviews, doing a life review where you start at the beginning and kind of think about your environment when you were born, you know, what your home was like, and how how those things um, subliminally, really unconsciously, uh, have affected you throughout your life. And uh, it's a really interesting practice. I would, I would recommend you, um, you know, just doing it on your own or even writing it down as a journal. But anyway, the reason I, I wanted to share this, is that we have a, a blogger called Kay Arthur who wrote a story about expressing your true self, you know, kind of in the light of what we've been through as as older women, you know, what, what our lives were like when we, when we were born. Now, I don't know, um, most of our parents were born in, you know, the 20s, uh, 30s, and they had a very tough life. If you stop to think about it, the world was not a very fun place at that time. You know, in the States in 1929, there was the Great Depression, uh, food was rationed, you know, life was really, really tough. So imagine that environment. That's how you know our parents were, were living. Now, you know, I was born in England, so my, my mom and dad were born in, you know, just before the wars. I mean, there were two really uh, intense, um, violent wars that they had to deal with and live through. And can you imagine what that did to their psychology? And I, I, I think sometimes I don't even you know, put that into, into play, but when I stop to think about it, it is important. And it's important for a couple of reasons. Um, our parents' lives were not abundant like, like we have today. And they certainly weren't instant gratification the way that we have in our world now. They had to really struggle for everything. So having a job that gave them security and longevity, you know, just that they could stay with for 30, 40 years was their goal. That was their idea of success because for them, they needed that security and, and that would lead them to the, um, to the luxuries and the, the lifestyle that they really wanted. A lot of our parents immigrated to other countries as happened with me. My dad um, moved our family to Canada when I was eight years old and we started a new life there. You know, a lot of people uh, were reinventing their lives after some pretty dramatic times. I mean, I can remember my mom, she actually died quite young, but she used to tell me stories about, you know, and she was, when she was uh, in her teens and 20s, you know, having to actually go down into the, uh, the um, air raid shelters wearing, or had to carry their masks with them all the time when they went to movies and dances. And like when you're, you know, a young woman, you don't want to be <laughs> you know, doing that. But she was spending most of her time in, in air raid shelters and, of course, started smoking and, um, you know, had, didn't have very good health. But, um, you know, these were things that were kind of part of their life. So anyway, the reason that Kay mentions this is because, you know, that influenced them in how they, they educated us. You know, for them, going for us to go to school, to, um, you know, get a good education, to get a job, you know, any job. <laughs> you know, it was just a job that earned money because money was, was going to give you control over your life and give you some, you know, a lifestyle that was, that for them was positive. So I think it's really important that to recognize how much we were encouraged, you know, to be good girls, you know, to work hard, to do whatever it took to survive. And I think it's those kinds of um, uh, traits that influence our, our actions sometimes today. I mean, how many of you feel guilty about spending money on yourself? Oh, you'll give lots of things to all your friends and your family and people that you know that you care because that's what you do you're generous you give you share but when it comes to yourself you feel guilty when you spend a little money on a little treat or something for yourself you know we even uh, feel guilty when we um, are sick and we stay in bed for a day 
I honestly can't remember the last time I stayed in bed for a whole day be because of having a cold or flu. It, you know, we just get on with it. And that's partly our, our upbringing. And I'm sure that as I'm talking here, kind of you, some of you are resonating with this and understanding how, just looking back on your um, past, on, on how, your how your parents were raised, actually do um, shape yourself, your self-image and the way that you, that you play in the world. So anyway, I think that um, Kay's got some fun ideas. She says, you know, you'll find your own personal ways over time as we have to unleash our passions and our in a woman inside of us, that beautiful, remarkable woman. We are so special. And, and, I, and I don't mean this in comparison to everyone's special, everyone's unique. But I think as older women, we've now turned a corner where we truly don't have to think about that anymore. We, we, we can put it in its place, learn from it, grow from it and then move on. So Kay isn't short of ideas. <laughs> She's got 10 ideas here I think she gives and they're real short. So I'll just whiz through them because I think they're fun and they, they might make you laugh and smile. But the first thing is find a new hairstyle. Grow it, cut it, <laughs> make it a different color. Be daring, be bold. It, it always gonna grow back. So do something fun with your hair. That's something to bring out the inner self. Just let whatever is inside of you come out. And your hair is important, actually, because it shapes your personality. So do something bold. Take an art class. You know, find one of those art classes where they serve wine <laughs> while, you, while you paint. And of course, no one cares what you paint, but you have a glass of wine or two, and you talk to friends and like-minded people. And um, being creative, I think, is her key there. Just do something fun. Buy new sheets. You know, buy those thousand, thousand thread sheets. <laughs> <laughs> the most comfortable, softest, loveliest one, sheets you can buy. The ones that are the beautiful color that you've always wanted. Purple or green or pink or blue. And just buy yourself beautiful sheets and snuggle up at night in luxury. Treat yourself. Buy a new color lipstick. If you're a pink girl, go and try something coral. Maybe a red. But just, you know, just don't have to spend a lot. Go to the drugstore, find a nice line that you like, a nice creamy lipstick and buy a new color. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, ah, that looks different. I love that. Another thing she says is to treat yourself to jewelry. Now, I know a lot of us don't have a ton of money to spend on jewelry, but there are some fun um, recycling places, vintage shops, um, all kinds of little places. And also, you know, in the States, there's Target, places like that, and H&M, they sell great jewelry. And it's not that expensive. Um, I bought this little necklace at a market and I think it was like 10 francs. So, you know, you can really find little treasures if you, um, if you look for them. And in, in a way, it's just the act of buying something that you really love that is an expression of you. Uh, find a new style that's all yours. You know, maybe you've always worn black. Try navy. Maybe try brown or just try bright jewel colors. But, uh, you know, try a style that, you know, maybe shifts your mind from where you're maybe classic and romantic to classic and bohemian. And uh, maybe a hat. But anyway, find a new style. That's another, another suggestion. Get a tattoo. Okay, I know I can hear people saying, no, not me, never, ever, ever. Get a fake tattoo, get one that you can rub off. <laughs> get a rose and put it on your cheek or, or on your wrist. That's a nice place to put a, a tattoo. You can hide it if you like. But tattoos, well, there's lots of women in their 60s and beyond who are getting t uh, tattoos. Big, um, very current, uh, trendy thing to do these days. Uh, personally, I don't think I would do one, but what about you? How many tattooed women do we have in our community? I bet we have a lot. I'll, I'll bet. So leave your leave that below if you have a tattoo. Tell us what it is, what the what the uh, design is. That would be really fun. But anyway, I think the point that that uh, Kay's making here, which I, I would like to reinforce, is you know we're a product of our past. We are what we are. We can't deny our the challenges we've had, the the pain or the suffering or the loss or the joys. We, it's all part of who we are today. But you can find your true self by getting in there and um, you know just trying new things, experimenting. So I would I, I hope that this has been useful. It, it took me down a, a, a memory lane, that's for sure. It was a bit of nostalgia to think about my past and um, you know what my childhood was like. Maybe you have gone through the same. In this conversation but um, I, I really do appreciate you um, being here if you've got other topics by the way that you'd like us to cover always feel free to drop me a mail margaret at 60andme.com and I'm happy to always consider what we can how we can share that you know your thoughts 
anyway have a really good day today I hope it's a, it's a great one and I just like to ask you a question um, about your childhood how did your childhood shape the person that you are today and is there something that you've always wanted to do that you couldn't do in the past that maybe this, this conversation has freed you to think about how did your childhood shape who you are today and what did, would you love to be doing in the next phase of your life Look forward to the comments, I really do, and I'll join the conversation myself, and let's make this as special as we always do. Get out there, share and talk and like and hug each other virtually, and share what the memories from your childhood and how they shaped you. That could be a really interesting conversation. Okay, so take care, everybody. Have a fabulous day, and I'll see you all back here again really soon. Bye for now.